It's not just red. There's no qualia. There's no pure redness. Everything that's happening in the experiential part is just an epiphenomena. It's just, you know, brain states, whatever. He said, you can't do that. I think that that's what we have to figure out, right? And so actually, you know, a great place to think about this is quantum mechanics, right? Because right. one of the things we're arguing is like, look, in the, in the chapter that I wrote on, because it was, I wrote this with Evan Thompson, who's a wonderful philosopher, and Marcelo Gleiser, who's a theoretical physicist. Um, when I was writing the chapter on the origin of the blind spot, like, you know, sort of what, how this emerged out of history, my, I, the subheader was like, well, it made sense at the time because it did, you know, it really, there was a reason why people adopted this third person God's eye deterministic view, this view of sort of like, yeah, the perfect clockwork of the universe. Yeah, totally made sense. But by the time you got to the beginning of the 20th century, science itself was telling you like, eh, eh. And no place does this appear more than in quantum mechanics, right? Quantum mechanics slams you with the idea that the, of the measurement problem, you know? Uh, the and most important thing about quantum mechanics is you have a dynamical equation, the Schrodinger equation, which, you know, you put in, like we talked about before, you have initial conditions, and now you've got a differential equation, and you crank out the differential equation, and it makes predictions for the future, right? Exactly like Newtonian physics or its higher versions of the Lagrange or Hamiltonians. But then this other thing happens where it's like, oh, by the way, as soon as you look at it, as soon as the measurement is made, I have a whole nother set of rules for you.